Hello and welcome to another video by Game, by Game Dev, Dev Journey. Journey. Lately I've been wondering, which engine is the most intuitive? What I mean by that is, if you've never used the engine before, how easy would it be for you to open the engine and figure out how to do something as simple as a button click which hides a sprite? I enjoy these kind of experiments and if you enjoy watching them, please tap that like button and consider subscribing if you would want to see more from me in the future. I've done a similar video before, comparing Godot and Unity, and the two engines were pretty similar. I think that Unity was a little easier, given Godot's node system, particularly for people who are already familiar with standard programming and on-click events for buttons. Today, I'm going to be attempting the button-click experiment in two engines, which I have not used before, Game Maker Studio and Construct. Let's see how each one performs with a complete beginner to the engine at the helm. Afterwards, please leave a comment on your thoughts about each engine and let me know if there was an easier way to do it. First up, let's see how Godot gets it done. Create a base node for our scene and name it Button Scene. Now add a sprite node and insert the Godot icon as the texture. Add a button node and change the text to read click me. Now reposition it. Add a script to the root node for the scene. Delete what is unnecessary. Save the scene. Now find the pressed signal for the button and connect it to the script. Let's add some code. This code should check to see if the sprite is currently visible. If it is visible, then we hide it. Otherwise, we show it. That should be it. Let's test the program. And you're done. Now let's take a look at Game Maker Studio. Start a new project and give it a name. Now right click on object and create a new object. Rename the object appropriately to represent the icon for Game Maker. Right click on objects again and create another one. And rename this one appropriately to represent a button. Now right click on sprites and click on create sprite. Resize it. an image to use as a texture for the sprite. Now add the sprite to your logo object. Let's create a new sprite for the button object and we are just going to edit the image and let's just resize it actually, make it a little bit bigger, maybe uh, 256 or so. And let's just draw a white rectangle to represent a 
rectangular button and then we'll just put some text in the middle um, that says click me now let's add this sprite to our button object Let's add an event, a gesture event. In fact, I'm going to call it a button tap. And what we'll do is check to see if the logo object is visible. And if it is, then we'll hide it. If it's not visible, then we'll show it. Very similar to what we did in Godot. Don't forget to add your objects to your room before you run the game. Oh, it seems like I've mixed the two objects up. I'll have to check the code for that. I'll have to swap OBJ button for OBJ logo because it's the logo we want to see. Is the logo currently visible? If it is, we hide it. If it's not visible, we show it. And there we go, working as expected. Moving on to construct, click on new project and name it. Double click on the background and search for button. Now click on the background to drop it in. Double click the background again and search for Sprite. Click on the folder icon to import an image to use as a texture. Now resize your image. Go to the event sheet. add an unclicked event for the button. Now add an action to occur when the button is clicked. The action happens on the sprite, so search for visible. Set the sprite visibility action to toggle, which means it will switch between visible and invisible. Run your program and you're done. Of course, we can always change the text on the button to click me so that it matches that of the other two projects. You'll see that I got confused and added the code to the logo object instead of the button object in Game Maker Studio. Also, the button object has no texture, so I had to draw a simple shape for the button and add some text to it. In my opinion, this is a big drawback for Game Maker that it doesn't have any built-in reusable GUI components. So, not so straightforward in Game Maker. Like I said, I've never used it before, and the experiment is meant to be how much can someone new to the engine work out without knowing anything. Quite a learning curve for Game Maker. I think that could scare some people away. There's no doubt that Construct is the most intuitive engine. Apart from knowing that you need to click on the background to add new components, it's very logical to work out how to add things and how they interact. Particularly if you have come to game dev from regular programming and you're used to the way you construct interfaces for business applications, you will not feel lost in construct. We didn't even have to do any scripting, which is as it should be for simple things like this. Granted, this is a very simple example it remains to be seen how well Construct can handle more complex tasks, such as lighting and pathfinding. 
but I'm going to give it a chance and I will be presenting some more experiments with it on this channel in the future. With engines like Godot and Unity and Unreal and even Game Maker, the barrier to entry for game dev is very high. Not only do you need to learn the quirks of each engine, you also need to learn the programming language associated with each engine. Then to think about the concepts of game design on top of this, I think it may just be a bridge too far for many. I can really appreciate the effort that Construct has put into helping you get started making a game as quickly and easily as possible. This leaves more room for you to focus on what's really important, the gameplay and how much fun the game is to play. Now some of you might be thinking that Construct 3 is just a toy and you couldn't use it to make any real games. Well, did you know that all the game footage used in the background has been of games made in Construct 3? Look out for more Construct 3 content from me in the future. As always, thank you for joining me and I hope to see you all again next time.